a real honor to be uh, with this distinguished company to, to brief uh, people who can actually do something about this uh, threat of genocide in India. Um, genocide Watch has been speaking out warning of genocide in India since 2002, when uh, riots and massacres in Gujarat uh, occurred that killed over a thousand Muslims. Uh, at that time, the chief minister of Gujarat uh, was Narendra Modi, and he did nothing. In fact, there's a lot of evidence that he actually encouraged those massacres. Now, of course, Narendra Modi uh, has become the prime minister of India. And under his BJP party's policies, uh, he has used anti-Muslim, Islamophobic rhetoric, in fact, uh, to build his political base. And two of those specific uh, ways has been the revocation, revocation of the autonomous status of Kashmir, uh, which is the one state in India that is majority Muslim. And that revocation uh, was largely aimed at restoring uh, Hindu domination in Kashmir. The Hindu pundits had left in 1990 as a result, frankly, of violence against them. But this act was to this revocation of autonomous status was specifically aimed at restoring uh, Hinduism and Hindu domination in Kashmir. The second thing that the uh, Modi government did was pass the Citizen Citizenship Amendment Act, uh, which was aimed at especially uh, Muslims because it gave specific uh, favorable status to refugees who had come from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, uh, who were of certain religious groups. But the one group that was excluded was Muslims. This act was specifically aimed, especially at the Muslims who had fled Bangladesh during the Bangladesh genocide and civil war in 1971 and had settled in Assam. And there were probably 3 million of those people and they settled down, they'd become you know, regular citizens and so forth of India. Well, this act required then a census overseen by the Supreme Court of India and the people who were uh, brought in in this census had to prove that they had been citizens of India before 1971 through documentation. Now, a lot of people don't have that kind of documentation, of course. I mean, how many people you know, uh, have papers uh, sitting around in their top drawers that uh, can prove they were citizens you know, in, before 1971? So the people who were targeted here were these people who had come from Bangladesh, mostly Muslims. And the idea is to declare them essentially to be foreigners and therefore to allow their deportation. Now, we have seen deportations before, very recently, haven't we? In 2017, that is exactly what the Myanmar government did to the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. They first of all declared them non-citizens, in the 1982 law that was passed in Myanmar that stripped the citizenship away from the Rohingya. And then they expelled them, deported them in effect through violence and also through genocide because it wasn't just forced deportation, which is a crime against humanity. It was also genocide because they killed well over 10,000 Rohingya. Uh, and remember that the genocide convention doesn't just cover genocides in whole, it also covers genocides in part. It is specifically aimed at the destruction in whole or in part of a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. And that is exactly what the Myanmar government did in, in Myanmar against the Rohingya. Well, what we're now facing is a very similar kind of plot, if you will. Uh, the aim here is Essentially, to, to uh, extend this, this uh, 
census and so forth, uh, all the way across India. And the people who will be victims of this are the 200 million Muslims who live in India. A lot of people, you know, forget that India has more Muslims than Pakistan. Uh, and they have been part of Indian society for centuries, <laughs> for, in fact, millennia. And it's, so it, it's really not, uh, it, it, the idea of Hindi as a, India as a Hindu nation, which is the Hindutva movement, is contrary to the history of India, and it is also contrary to the Indian constitution. The Indian constitution was specifically set up to make India a secular country, uh, to allow for equality between all religions. Uh, it was not aimed at making a Hindu nation. And in fact, during the uh, during the first years of India's existence under the Congress party, that secularity was defended. What we have now though, is a actual member of the RSS, this extremist Hindutva oriented group, Mr. Modi as prime minister of India. And so what we have here is an extremist who's taken over the government. We should be aware that Genocide is not a, an event, it is a process, it develops. That is what Genocide Watch uh, is, in, is what we try to do, is to warn about genocide. We don't just declare this is a genocide because I'd say right now, it would be very hard to say, you know, that there's a genocide in Kashmir or there's a genocide in Assam. What there are, however, are the early signs and processes of genocide in both of those places. And we believe that is what the hardware, uh, the hardware meeting was especially aimed at uh, inciting. Incitement of genocide is a crime under the Genocide Convention. And it is law in India that incitement of genocide is illegal. That law must be enforced. There are also other laws in India that could be enforced against the leaders of this. And yet, Mr. Modi has not spoken out against that violence. And he said, oh, it is not my responsibility. It's up to the state, up to the Uttarakhand state. And the point, however, is as the leader of India, he has an obligation, a moral obligation to denounce this kind of hatred, this kind of hate speech that specifically calls for the killing of Muslims. Uh, the genocide watch model of genocide process, which is the 10 stages of genocide, I should really have called them the 10 processes of genocide, begins with classification. It begins with trying to make people, trying to exclude people from citizenship. Uh, it also includes dehumanization, calling people uh, terrorists or separatists or criminals or uh, the kinds of language that was used uh, uh, in, uh, in the, the meeting in hardware, and that has been used by the uh, Indian government also against Muslims. It is polarization, uh, which uh, includes this anti-Muslim hatred, and it is the kind of preparation that we are seeing right now where this dehumanization is being preached. So we are warning that genocide could very well happen in India, U.S. Holocaust Museum is right about that. Uh, one of the first genocides that I predicted uh, way back uh, in 1989 was in Rwanda when I lived there. And I could see from the ID cards where it identifies Tutsis and Hutus and Twa and, and so forth, that these cards could be used for genocide. And when I asked the President of the Supreme Court, who was a Hutu himself, uh, couldn't you outlaw this, you know, making these uh, ID cards uh, not have these ethnic identifications on them? He said, no, we don't have judicial review here. So you're going to have to talk to the president. So I got an appointment to talk to President Javier Amana. I went in, we talked. I said, you know, these ID cards could be used for genocide. At that point, and I said, you have to get this off of the cards. A sort of mask went down over his face because he didn't want to hear that. It turned out he was, of course, 
a leader of some of the genocidal massacres that had occurred earlier in that country. Uh, but as we left that meeting, I said, Mr. President, if you don't do something to prevent genocide in your country, there is gonna be a genocide here within five years. That was in 1989. The genocide developed, the hate speech developed, the all the early warning signs developed. And as we know, 800,000 Tutsis and other Rwandans were murdered in 1994. We cannot let that happen in India. Thank you.